Hey, uh, so how many of you have heard of Wayfair? I really can't see. Okay, cool. I should just stop asking that question because, especially in Boston, it's not, you know, this is home ground for us. Um, well, how many of you shop, prefer shopping uh, using your mobile app? Okay, there's like one guy. He's, resp he's responsible for the iOS app at Wayfair, so that's why he's raising his hand. Uh, how many of you prefer shopping through web, like on, on your mobile phone, but on web? Perfect, that's cool. So that justifies uh, most of my talk. Um, cool, okay, so uh, I'm Shrenik Sadalgi. Um, I lead engineering on a team called Wayfair Next. And at Wafer Next, we're trying to figure out how to use emerging technologies to create next generation experiences for our customers. And these are uh, technologies that are not mass market yet, uh, but will be in the next two to three years, so we're making our bets a little early. And uh, we're just like any other R&D team. Uh, we do a lot of uh, experimenting, a lot of prototyping, and uh, we deliver ideas and concepts, and we try to help catalyze and nurture them into production. So one example of that is the view in room 3D feature that most of you have uh, experienced. Um, uh, but a little plug for Wafer. Um, um, most of you probably know uh, that we are growing very rapidly, but a lot of you actually don't know that at the core, uh, we are a tech company. So uh, many of you might think that the experience that powers the, the, our store and the entire end-to-end uh, uh, -end experience is uh, powered by a platform like Shopify or something like that, right? And that's absolutely not true. We're building everything from scratch, including our delivery network, our logistics networks. So uh, we're a little different from the rest of the online retailers. And um, we invest heavily in engineering. There's a lot under... Uh, the tip of the iceberg is what you see like, on, on, the, on the storefront, on the web, uh, but there's a lot of engineering that actually powers that. But what are we doing at uh, AR in Action? So over the last two years, uh, we've been uh, exploring 3D as uh, a new medium uh, to provide our customers with inspiration to create beautiful imagery. We do a lot of renderings. Uh, being, we create a lot of photorealistic renders that uh, are good representations of that product. We're also trying to figure out how to immerse people in spaces and help them design the spaces, provide productivity tools for our customers so they can design better and shop better. That's VR for us. Um, and when you, come, when you think about the practical use cases where can we actually provide the customer a, a way of looking at a piece of furniture in their room, in context, at real scale, to help them uh, make a decision. Uh, so that's how we're using augmented reality. But today I want to talk about uh, a situation that we're in right now. Um, and I want to show you how the different AR technologies have evolved uh, over the last like, 10 to 15 years. So 10 years ago, let's say, if you were to create an AR app, and your experience. You would probably be using um, a, a headset uh, that had uh, passed through like a cameras in the front and that passed through the video. And it was probably tethered to a computer and most likely a Windows PC. In order to get your pixels onto the screen, you would have to use a graphics API, right? And your choices were OpenGL and DirectX at that time. But you might have used a game engine to actually bypass or like abstract out the different uh, graphics uh, APIs and just you know, write your code in the game engine. But if you're hardcore, you probably write uh, OpenGL code directly. And to power the AR part of it, you would end up using uh, an, an AR SDK, a, most likely a marker-based AR SDK. And on your application level, you would probably use, uh, like I said, a game engine like Unity or XNA at that time, uh, or just use native code. But if you fast forward uh, a couple of years, uh, a few years after that, uh, to, a, to the time when smartphones became very popular and cameras on smartphones became very popular, and let's say you were trying to create an AR experience on Android. So this is what the stack would look like. You would probably be using OpenGL as your uh, graphics API, writing your code in Unity or Java, and still be using an AR SDK to power your marker-based AR app. You could also be uh, markerless, and I'm not listing any of the markerless uh, uh, toolkits out there because there's just too many of them, and they just will not fit here. Um, if, you were, if you were trying to create an Apple experience, right, an experience on iOS, uh, Apple likes to do things their own way. So, uh, you would be stuck with either uh, Metal or OpenGL, and most likely Metal because uh, you know, it's uh, probably better to uh, render out your, uh, um, your experience in Metal. You would still be using an AR uh, SDK, 
uh, and you will be using either Unity or SceneKit uh, or, or uh, Objective-C and C for your application logic. Then what happens is the, we, we progress, and we, there was a, a big step in evolution, I, I think, at least in terms of AR, where markerless technologies became more popular, and uh, the requirement for markerless technologies was more obvious. Uh, people were tired of putting the markers um, on, on, in your space. Um, you would, uh, you're tired of like th having things float away in space, and so it, it was like you know the customers would probably not actually put lay down a marker. Actually, there's a question for you guys: How many of you would actually lay down a marker and try to visualize a f like piece of furniture before you shop it? Nobody? Come on, this is an AR conference. You have to be believers here. No? <laughs> no, there's like a few people at the back. Cool, that's good. Um, but uh, customers don't want to do that, right? Um, so, so Tango comes along. Uh, and brings uh, this really good tracking, right? But the caveat is it's hardware based. And uh, we begin to like write, you, you begin to recreate your AR experience in Tango, hoping that Tango would become uh, a thing and would become ubiquitous, ubiquitous in the next three or, three or four years, right? Um, and that's still like, it's kind of like, I think uh, it's not dead yet. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's taking a nice nap, I would say. It's probably gonna come back in the next two to three years. Fingers crossed. Um, but then ARKit comes along, right? And that uh, is a very powerful, like, I guess, software-based experience that you can now reach a lot more customers than all of the different technologies put together, right? So this is like a big game changer. So now you're kind of trying to, say, you're trying to hurry up and recreate your AR experience using ARKit. And this is what the stack looks like. And you're probably going to end up using Apple uh, defined technologies, right? So in this case, it would be SceneKit running on ARKit, running on Metal, finally on the hardware, right? Because Unity is, is great for cross-platform cross if you're, I guess, creating a standalone app. Uh, but if you're trying to marry Unity or embed Unity inside uh, an Apple experience, it's, they don't, you're going to have a lot of trouble. So you're going to end up just doing things the Apple way. Well, now it's Google's turn again, and AR Core comes out. And now you're, you're kind of like, oh, okay, I need to kind of recreate my AR experience for uh, Android phones. And um, you might end up changing a little bit of your code, like, you know, in Unity, just change, uh, like, replace your Tango with AR core, right? But that's still some amount of work. Meanwhile, Microsoft, we don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, they're, they're probably trying to figure out what AR means for them um, and maybe embed that directly into, uh, into the Windows platform. But here's where we are today, right? And this is a problem because as a developer, I want to kind of write one, I want to maintain one code base and be able to deliver this, a similar experience across the different platforms and be platform independent and device independent. This is very similar to a time before where you actually had to uh, write specific code to make sure your web page is rendered correctly in either Internet Explorer or um, Nets Netscape uh, in the 90s, right? Uh, some of you might be familiar with that, but this was a problem back then too. And the way it was solved was through the Any Browser effort where Netscape uh, had to open source uh, Mozilla and the World Wide Web Consortium had to, uh, was created and we standardized on HTML pages and that's what you see today. Like, no matter what browser you use, except Internet Explorer 5, you're, not, you're going to see the same thing, right? And that's the expectation. And we had a similar problem, or similar situation, rather, uh, with uh, mobile, right? Uh, the different mobile platforms that were, that were out there. And eventually, kind of, uh, the mobile race is, like, you know, is now hovering around two uh, different competitors. And you still have to spend some amount of time and effort to actually create um, platform-specific experiences in order to like, satisfy your customers. Are we going to have that with AR? It seems like, right? Because you're ending up doing a lot of work to actually satisfy every platform, satisfy the, I mean, I guess that there is some, um, you have to kind of account for the fact that this is still a progressing technology and you have to kind of, you know, you still have to, you expect to do that work, but maybe there's a solution for that. So what if you can take all of these different technologies, take the commonness, and abstract that out somehow and create a cross-platform experience. What's that one cross-platform app 
that we all use every day, day in and day out, to see the to, to experience things. Right? So the answer to that is Chrome or, or the browser, right? Um, and if you think that the browser is uh, going to deliver the AR experience, then we think about like the graphics technologies. If you saw something in the previous cases, OpenGL stood out as one of the most common things. I mean, granted that it's OpenGL, so it has to be, right? So, it's, uh, so if you take a subset of that, uh, which is WebGL, maybe that can power your experience. And what better than JavaScript, good old JavaScript, like the, the most versatile language out there, to power your application logic, right? You can, since you're using a browser anyway, you can might as well use uh, JavaScript. Can you actually take the commonness between the different AR SDKs? Take just the lowest common denominators from the different SDKs and you know, create a little abstract layer that we can call web AR that will help us solve the cross-platform problem. Right? This stack seems to work well. And the basics of web AR, the, 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 the most common denominators that I was talking about, um, can we just get six off tracking? and abstract that out? Can we just use the pass-through camera like, just to merge the, uh, the virtual and the real worlds? Or if you're using an HMD, then you, you just, that's already there for you. You don't have to do any work for that. And can I also get a simple understanding of the real world, which means like, just surfaces, um, you know, horizontal like walls, ceilings, floors, tables, and stuff like that. Can I just somehow like, abstract that out and provide that uh, to the JavaScript? So I want to show you an example here of uh, some prototypes that we've been working on. Uh, this one is in partnership with Google. Google's leading the uh, effort on web AR. And this is an experience that uh, runs in a special version of Chrome that has web AR enabled in it. And uh, this is running on a Tango phone. Um, and so let's just play this video. This is, um, is an experience where, I'm, uh, where, I'm, um, where I want to search for some furniture in my room. And um, it, it, like I can kind of draw a box and then filter the products out based on the size that I want uh, the products to be in. Can we roll the video? Oh, cool. All right. So this is in a browser. They go to wavefire.com and then they draw a little cube in their space. And now the products that you see there, they're all filtered by that size. So you guarantee that that thing will fit in that space. So it's a new way of searching for products. So this, in this case, you're searching for coffee tables and you just kind of pick a coffee table, it shows up. That's the real scale, that's how it looks. And this is all running in a browser. All right, here is uh, another example. And in this example, uh, I'm trying to search. This is how most people shop, right? Like you're searching for something in your favorite search engine, and uh, you look at any of the results, you click on it, you see details, and you just make a decision whether you want to get it or not. Cool. So I'm searching for a kind of chair. I see some search results there. And uh, I choose, I like Langley Street as an exclusive exclusively available on Wafer. I pick the product, and uh, I see it, and now I'm, I'm just looking at the details, I'm looking at images, and now I see there's an option to view it in 3D. I just tap on it, and immediately opens up the AR experience. I'm looking for the floor, I, I'm trying to see where I can place it. I just place it there, and that's it, it's there. So this is running on Chrome again, on iOS, using ARKit. So you see, like it's it's kind of you're getting a similar experience, but the the point is that um, it's one code base, right? And it's all controlled server side. So I'm just it's all web. It's you get the same advantage that that web gives you. So you can uh, you know you can A/B test uh, almost any time and every time rather, and um, you can change the experience server side. You can um, uh, you don't have to maintain different code bases, and you know this is. I, we believe like this is uh, the future, and um, you don't, you're solving the cross-platform problem. Um, and I think this is where the direction of uh, AR, this is where AR is headed. And yeah, that's about it. Cool, thank you.